So today I will talk about uh, genome alignment. So just to give you uh, one phrase uh, summary, it's how you place your reads over the genome. But we'll see more in detail what this, this means. So what, we, uh, what I will try to uh, bring you as um, knowledge during this lecture, I will give you, give you another small introduction to NGS technology. So uh, just uh, uh, reminders of what we already uh, uh, see this morning about in during uh, Jarrod's uh, talk. Uh, to actually try to make you understand what the main characteristic of the data, uh, what is the problem that we have to face when we do uh, genome alignment, what are the possible source of error, and also give you some uh, more general uh, knowledge about terminologies and file format. And during the practical, we will uh, see how to run the first step of the DNA state pipeline, and tomorrow we'll see how to run the uh, second and third step of the of the pipeline. So as I say, I will start with um, uh, NGS uh, technology introduction. So I will try to be uh, fast on that because Gerard explained me really well this morning. So the revolution of the sequencing uh, was made because uh, 10 to 20 years ago there was a major, major project for um, sequencing uh, genomes and uh, it takes uh, months and years depending on the size of the, of the genome, so years for the human genome and it costs a billion of dollars. Where well, now with the new technologies uh, for small genomes we can have the um, genome with sufficient enough amount of coverage in hours, not minutes, minutes is a dream, but in hours, and it only costs thousands of dollars. Uh, so what is the next generation sequencing? So it's on, so as Jarrod presented this morning, um, it starts from the uh, clone-based approach <coughs> that is present uh, this morning. So it was you got your fragment of uh, DNA, you put it in a clone, and then you put it in the, in, the, in the old sequencer, and it will give you your sequence as a, as a program here. Uh, so, but the problem is the number of uh, runs you can do at a time, so it's 96 uh, sequences at a time, it takes many hours for each run, and you, um, so it's really um, not um, suitable for large genome. So the next generation sequencing, um, how it works? It works in the same idea to generate, uh, call, to use fluorescent calls for each basis to uh, be able to retrieve the sequence. But the idea is to do million of sequence at a time. So it's just a part of a, a small image of the flow cell. So you see that in the flow cell, each cycle it will take a picture of this uh, genetic image of dots and try to refine uh, which cluster correspond in each cluster which color is uh, each cluster for each cycle. So how it works? Um, so I will present here only uh, the Illumina approach, which is called sequencing by synthesis. The main idea, you take your, your DNA, you share your, your DNA to a uh, fragment size where you know approximately the size of your fragment. You add some specific adapters, then when you have these adapters, uh, you uh, load uh, this uh, fragment on your flow cell. So on your flow cell, you've got some complementary adapters that will uh, catch the one you load on the flow cell. So you will end up with some fragment of DNA, uh, uh, which is um, uh, linked to your flow cell. And you will do uh, what we call the bridge amplification. So you have the fragment that will catch one side of the, of the, um, of the DNA fragment and it will um, create a bridge between one adapter to the other adapter, and then you will uh, do the amplification directly under the flow cell. So, so when you do the amplification, then you denature the double strand molecules, and you will have two copies, and so on, at the end to, to arrive to cluster of sequencing that represent exactly the same sequence. So for one group of molecules, you have the same initial DNA fragment that you have put in the, in the flow cell. Then you do the sequencing. So you start from the beginning, you add uh, fluorescent, uh, fluorescent um, okay. and for each uh, denucleotide, the fluorescent is cast at the same, for all the clusters at the same times, and you will end up with these kind of images 
well, you are above each cycle, you know. For, for a given cluster, I got, a, I got a yellow dot, I got a blue dot, green dot, yellow, red, and now to extract oops, the, the sequence. So it worked really well, it's really efficient. There are some uh, source of error, of error, as we discussed this morning, phasing, prephasing of the, of, the, of the data, but we'll come later on that. So there's actually uh, five major players to do um, sequencing. Um, Life Technology, which have developed solid and iron torrent, Illumina, which do solid side, you know, ISIC, MySIC. Um, so, except for MySIC, it's kind of, um, MySIC is more in between, but this technology do small fragments of sequencing. So, from 50, from 30 to 100, 200 uh, uh, base pair long. Here with MySIC and uh, 454, we uh, go in the medium size of um, uh, a medium size of uh, size of read, so it's around 300 to uh, 600. So 300 more for my six and six seven hundred for um, four five four. Uh, what you have to know is four five four is now closed. So uh, we still at the center offer some uh, four five four um, run of se run of sequencing, but it will be um, it will be it will, the technology will die during the, the next year. And we have the large um, read technology with Pacific bi Pacific Biosense. We developed the PacBio machine and Oxford Nanopower, which developed the MinIon and the Gridai. Just a, a quick comparison of the technologies. So we talked about this morning of that, but uh, what is interesting to look when you try to decide when you have your, your own project and you try to decide what technology should I use? First, um, the size of the read, depending on what you are doing. If you want to do structural variants, you need to have more long read. If you want to do uh, assembly, you need to have longer read. If you want to do uh, RNA-seq, you can go with shorter read, or whole genome, just classical whole genome mapping, shorter read. So depending on your experiment, you need to know the size of the read you want to do, the, si the type of error that each technology has. So long read and medium read really generate more in-depth, and especially long read generate in-depth around um, when you have stretch of the same um, type of nucleotide. So when you have like three, four, five uh, A, for example, uh, sometimes you will only have four, uh, four out of five or six, uh, six out of, uh, of five. Um, where for the short, the short reads, you in Illumina you will have substitution, so mismatch. And what is the type of error? So you have really low error for the short reads, larger error for the um, longer reads, but this is a single pass error. So this is what the row sequence will give you. So we have methods like um, Jared talked this morning, if we do two-day reads or two-pass reads uh, for nanopore, it will decrease to 3%. If you correct CSS approach for uh, by bio, you will also be able to decrease the level of error, but you will lose a, a bit on the maximum size of read you can have. So all these kind of uh, technical consideration, and as Jared said this morning, all these numbers are probably still uh, out of, uh, out of date because the technology uh, evolved uh, really fast. What is important to, to think is about advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so mainly uh, nanopore and pack bios advantages is the size of the reads uh, and the time to sequence. Um, nanopore is also advantages because it's really to use, you just need to open your, your device and, and, uh, and um, uh, fill, the, fill the device. Uh, but the uh, main disadvantages is the uh, low yield, the cost, and the type of error, and the stability. But now the stability is more and more uh, in progress with Nanopore. Uh, for Illumina, um, the main advantages is to the high um, sequence yield, the lower cost, and the accuracy of the data. Um, the main disadvantage is not for use for center like us is the cost of the, of the equipment. Um, so, and the fact that you cannot read some certain type of um, variant due to the lower si the size of the of the, of the sequence. So, just to give you the, uh, an example of what we can do with this type of machine. So, this is what we've got uh, the number of uh, machine we've got at uh, at our center. So, we've got uh, three, four, four, two, we've got uh, this, all this type of machine. So, for the medium, um, for the for the machine that give me, you medium range. Uh, read lines. Usually, what we do with that, uh, small number just sequencing. So it was what we do at the beginning. You no, know, 
we don't do it anymore, but you can do it. But it won't be a, not the best choice. But we do mainly for this type of machine amplicant sequencing, metagenomics, and validation. For the short read and high throughput, uh, what we do, we do um, like what, everything which is uh, wall. Wall exome, wall genome, uh, wall transcriptome, chipsec, wall genome by sulfat, and anything of that you need to have a, a wall coverage of your, of your genome. So you need to have the, the power of the, of the high um, of the high uh, yield of, um, of sequence. With a long read, what we do is small and medium genome, um, the new assembly, so long haplotype uh, sequencing, targeted sequencing, epigenomics, and uh, validation. And here, sorry, the, there was a problem with my slide. Uh, with the 10x, so 10x is not a, a really a, a sequencing technology, it's more a, a library prep technology. And what we do with that, we do a lot of um, apotyping, especially for cancer. We do um, uh, uh, um, uh, world genome assembly. But what we really do a lot with technical genomics, actually in the center, is a single cell RNA seq analysis. Because directly with the machine, you can put your cell, and the cell will be, um, will be catched individually. And you could have also barcode to catch each molecule individually. So it's really efficient for the single cell um, analysis. So now that we know a bit more about the technology, what are the main parameters you need to think when you design your experiment? Uh, this different type of approach. Regions, library type, error profile, barcoding, if you want to, if you want to put several individuals in the same lane of sequencing. So this is the main characteristic that need to uh, drive your choice. When I meet people and discuss with them, they usually come with these two uh, parameter as a major, major factor. Uh, if you if uh, if you do it, that to my point of view, it's not it will not be the best uh, way to design your experiment. But for sure, we have not unlimited form, so we need still to take it into account. So now, what 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 should we do from data? So when we do um, uh, DNSSEC uh, analysis. The idea is to start from the fast queue, what we will have from the machine, to VCF. So VCF is variant uh, call format file. So it's uh, uh, the file where you will have your variants. So what is the what we have at the beginning was the fast queue. So for each sample, you will have usually two files because you have your fragment, and you will sequence one extreme one end of the fragment and the other end of the fragments, and uh, each end will be in the in the file one, and this, each second end will be on the on the second uh, file. Uh, so for each sample, depending on the coverage you will have, you will end up with a file that could go from five gigabytes to three hundred gigabytes of data. So it's massive, uh, a massive amount of data. And in your fast queue, your data will pre will be present approximately like that because each um, sequencer, each technology has its own set of uh, fast queue format, but there are some kind of rules they need to respect. So the rule is you will have four um, row pair sequence. The first one that starts with a, a at sign uh, that describe that give you the name of the of the, um, the name and the identity of your uh, sequence. Usually it's linked to the to the name of the center, name of the machines, um, and you have some positional information regarding where the cluster was taken on the on the on the, on the flow cell, and usually at the end, which tells you slash one, will tell you it's read one, where if you are on read two, it will read slash two. The same ID with slash two at the end. The second line is really the sequence that you have called from your sequencer. Then you have a, a third line, which is used for a, a second either, so usually, but it's but starting with a plus sign. Usually, it's either empty or the same. Uh, uh, the same ID, and then you have the quality of each basis. So um, the quality, as you can see, the quality is a numeric value. Uh, you don't see it, here, but it's a numeric value that tells you what's the quality of my data. Uh, the problem to use a numeric value is uh, if your numeric value goes more than nine, zero to nine, you cannot make the difference between. Uh, if I say here my numeric value for my first basis is 32, 
is three for the first one, two for the second one, or thirty-two for the for the first one. So what we use for the quality, uh, we encode so this value. So each numeric value correspond to a specific uh, ASCII par ASCII uh, let ASCII parameter ASCII uh, sorry ASCII uh, sign or parameters uh, ASCII letters or characters yes and so each characters are able to revert to the uh, given to the numeric value it corresponds so you won't have to do it every software that take this um, file type of file in, into uh, into account will delete it for you. So what this uh, quality means? So uh, so what it's called the base quality. So it's a numeric value uh, here Q, which is a, what is what we call a thread score. A thread score is minus ten log base ten of a given uh, probability. It is a definition of a, of a thread score. And so in in the case of the base quality. The probability that we uh, that we measure here is the probability that the base that have been called is incorrect. So the probability that you have made an error. So the, as it is a minus ten log ten, the higher the, your numeric value is, the lower your um, probability of error will be. So if we take a thirty uh, base quality, we have zero point one percent chance of error. So this is how we usually represent base quality and how, when we do base quality, how we QC or low sequence. What we do usually, so it's a representation of for each cycle of a sequence experiment of the best quality uh, distribution among all the bases, so among all the million reads that we generate. So it's the representation of the, of the distribution. So as I mentioned, the, the distribution usually start high, reach the top qualities they can do, Stay stable, and when we progress along the read, when we accumulate when we accumulate cycles, we start to have, as I explained this morning, we start to have some molecules that are not in phase. So we start to accumulate molecules not, which are not in in phase with the um, with the with the group, and we start to see a cluster which is less well defined, and we start to have a decrease in uh, quality in the quality. So it's why at the end of the read we saw a real. Uh, drop down of the of the general distribution of the quality. Another type of uh, so yeah. Before going to the next uh, step, uh, it's important to look at your quality of your data because if you have low quality, you have more, you are more likely to see error in your read, and if you are more likely to have error in your um, uh, analysis, like SNP or as we call it. Another type of um, another type of analysis or QC we do on the FASTQ file is to look at the uh, positional base content. So along your reads, what are the content of uh, my base? So if I'm totally random, each, so each color represents one basis. And if I'm totally random, all my reads, I should have, I should have uh, 25%. Do you think that's fine? Yes or no? Here that's fine because we are. it's a, it's a graph for a RNA data. So in genes, the, the base content is around 25 of each. Um, of each basis, but for whole genome, I tell you, if you see for whole genome, if you see 25, 25, 25, there's probably an issue because the GC content is not the distribution of all the bases in the genome. The GC content is around, uh, I think it's 60% uh, uh, or the opposite. So you should expect to have one around 40, uh, yes, 30, and the other around 20. So two bar if you do whole genome. Another type of QC uh, you can see is do you find specific adapters? Do you find specific known sequence in your data? And what amount of duplicate reads you have in your data? Yes? Here? Yeah. So here, uh, just, uh, here it's just because uh, it's a common pattern you see when you do RNA. So because the way um, the RNA library preparation is done with Illumina, the way the fragments are shared is not fully random. And it's why we observe uh, this pattern, this kind of pattern, because there's a specific uh, region where the, the, the DNA is shared by, by the enzyme. So the DNA is the, the, the DNA will be flat. The DNA will, we don't have this type of pattern, will be flat, but with 
two line around uh, 30 and two line around uh, 20. I don't get your question. Yeah, but you, sh you, I think you share at the, the beginning before doing the reverse transcription. Uh, and it's what ex why I have to say that it's what Illumina explained on their forums about this uh, this pattern. So some people. Keep this basis because if you want to do, for example, um, uh, SNV calling on Irony, here you are really more error prone because you have a specific pattern and you have a problem with aligner. And a lot of people, when you do SNV calling, will just remove the 12 first base on Irony. Another type of QC uh, we do usually uh, on the data is to um, take, extract randomly a set of a given number of reads here, it was 1,000 reads, and we just blast to the NR databases, and we just look uh, what is the more um, important uh, it we've got to be sure that it corresponds to what we uh, were supposed to sequence. And it's also an, a good way to flag for contamination from other um, species. So now we have our first queue. We see we can assess the quality. So when we have this kind of pattern, we don't have usually a perfect a fast file. So what we need to do is to uh, remove um, data that is with lower quality or data that is not coming from our genomes. So what to do? We do trimming. So uh, when we do trimming, we apply usually three um, three steps, three action. So the first thing to do is to remove adapters. So adapters you have it at each ex each end of your uh, DNA fragment. So if your fragment, because when you do your size selection, you cannot select exactly the size. So it's kind of, you have, uh, it's a kind of interval of size. So you will have shorter fragments for sure. And so these shorter fragments, when you will sequence, you, you can go over the end of your uh, DNA fragment and start to sequence the adapter. So if you catch them, you, you will need to, to remove them. The second uh, type of, um, of uh, uh, cleaning we do, we start from the trip try to the end of the of the read and we just change the quality of each basis and if the quality is below a given uh, threshold, so it's your choice to apply uh, each threshold. Depending on your experiment, usually we use either 30 or 20, depending on what we want to keep, if we want to be more stringent or less stringent. And we remove all the bases that are under this uh, threshold. And when the one in a read the threshold go up to this uh, threshold, we stop the trim. And when we have applied these two conditions, these two filters, if the size of the remaining reads is lower than the given size, we say, okay, it's not a read that I can use uh, efficiently for my analysis, so I will, uh, I will drop it. Uh, okay. So just a, just a quick comment. It's important when you do this type of, this type of thing to start trimming with adapter. Because trimming the adapter is a sequence recognition, so you, you have the sequence of your, um, of your adapter. So if you start by doing trimming, then you will start by removing bases in your adapter, and it will be harder to find the real adapter. So it's important to start to do adapter, quality, and then run. Yes? So when we observe this kind of pattern, it's really uh, rare when it's occur, but usually it's, sometimes it's, it occur. Uh, for example, we have that like uh, one, year and one and a half years ago. Um, we have a problem of temperature in the room of the sequencer, and uh, the temperature goes up, and then people, <sighs> for the emergency, we, put the, we stop everything, we put the temperature on, like the grid temperature, and we restart, and we have one cycle that uh, the quality in, in these cases, what we do with, with specific um, um, tools, we say don't take into account disease bases and we uh, change every call as an end. Yeah. So, so when you say that you trim, for example, from here, let's say base number 92, for example, you do that for all the reads that the machine generated or only those reads 
where the quality was bad. On this read, where the quality is bad. So also one thing, you we you have an option. Here me when I do it, usually I do it base by base, but you can do like a sliding window. Say okay, I take the, for example, the five first uh, last reads. If the quality of the of the, the mean quality of uh, over this five read is lower than this result, then I cut these bases and I and I move. Because that's the reason for the standard deviation, right? Yeah. Some some of your reads will. Have good sequences until the very end, and then some of those you'll have four. Yeah, but jokes. usually you cannot be down and then up because uh, in most of the case, if you are if you are going down, it means that your read are uh, unfazed. A lot of sequence on your cluster are unfazed, and you cannot rephase them at the next cycle. So usually, uh, when your quality start to uh, to decrease, it, it will not uh, it become better after after a few cycles. <laughs> Will just become worse and worse. But it's different for every read. Yeah, it's different for every read. Yeah. I think there was a question there. Uh, since your adapter is at the end, what yeah. happens if uh, your quality is very low at the end and uh, the Lumina Clip adapter programs? How can how can they recognize? So the find the adapter in order to. So we we put the when you the recognition is not the perfect matches, so you tolerate some uh, some error. So when you have low quality, you don't expect to have each base as an error. You know, it's still uh, uh, you know it's still around like twenty ten, it's still like one percent two percent. So you don't expect to have multiple uh, error at the end. I think you had a question. No. Okay. And now. Um, just to tell you that in in the way we work, no, in, to tell you the truth, no, we didn't. Um, when we have good when we have good um, quality all over sequence, which is the the, the norm for uh, that, it's really rare now that we have this pattern. We usually have something like that, which at the end we are around this level of thirty. So, in that case, we don't do anything because we now have um, a liner that is. Uh, able to catch the adapter and softly the adapter also mark the, the part of the read as uh, non genomic uh, DNA. Which is the saliva? Uh, BWMM, the one who will use during the, the, the practical. Last question. Yeah. Um, is the reason the quality is lower toward the beginning, or is this an RNA sample? No, it's just because um, the, in the first cycle the machine is not is need to, to uh, uh, calibrate, and especially with the older flow cell, we need to, to define. The, um, the cluster. Now with the new uh, for cell, uh, the new patent, patented for cell, where each cluster is uh, already prepositioned on the for cell. Each cluster is the machine know where each cluster is at the beginning. The quality starts really higher and it's almost flat. Yeah. Sorry. Soft clip. So soft clip is. When you align your reads, uh, you can do many things. You, the aligner can do many things, but um, it can break your read into different pieces. But you can break your reads and say, OK, this species, I don't find a, any a place for this species anywhere in the genome. So probably it's not a genomic region. So instead of let it there, it just mark the sequence as this sequence, the last, for example, 10 days, is non-genomic. So don't use it for other. Uh, uh, subsequent analysis to look for variants for everything. So it's just a, a kind of uh, additional information you add on your alignment to tell you this 10 or whatever number of reads, don't use it because it's not part of the genome. So soft clipping, you keep the sequence in your reads, so you keep the sequence in, the, in, your, in your file, but you say don't use it, hard clipping, you, you, you cut the sequence. So many tools to do it, as we do, we will use Trimomatic, uh, but many other tools are available, so many other tools do the same uh, kind of job with the same efficiency, so it's really a, a user uh, preference, us it's just because we use it for long and because it was really easy to handle, because at the beginning, the, when we use Illumina, the thread court was not encoded the same way and it was able to really use from one to the other. But it's really, there's no, rule of thumb about which is the, what is the best one.
So when we have done the cleaning of the fast queue, so we have a good set of data. The next thing is to do alignment. Before doing alignment, when you have your reads and you have cleaned your reads, you have two possible strategies. Either you do uh, alignment, mapping. So the idea will take is to take your read and find the best uh, location on your uh, reference sequence. Uh, it's important to see it's the best location. Most of the time, best will mean the true location, but not always. So it's the best uh, location based on the reference sequence. Whereas you can do um, you can do um, assembly, where the ID and which will be developed by Jared uh, tomorrow. Uh, and, and details. It's to take all the all the reads to try to reconstruct um, consensus sequence as contigs and to regenerate uh, your own reference sequence. And after that, when you have regenerated your own, own reference sequence, you can either use it as if or remap, relocate your read over your new reference sequence. But me, I will not go further with the assembly. Um, so, as we'll see, what is the read mapping? So the Read mapping is uh, a bit challenging because uh, you need to map million of short reads to the genome, so really a lot of uh, tasks to do. And so you need to map, so it's kind of, you have a puzzle of three billion plays and you have uh, millions of uh, pieces you need to place there. And uh, so it's, uh, it's challenging in terms of uh, computation. And also because uh, many uh, mapping locations could be possible for each species. And you don't want to only keep exact matching, otherwise you won't be able to uh, to extract um, to extract uh, the variant. So you need to be able to tolerate some var uh, some some, var some error in your matching. So uh, there's many algorithms, but the most uh, used now and the one that seems to perform the well is the Bureau, Bureau Wheeler Transform uh, uh, um, algorithm. It's the one which is um, implemented in the BWA mapper, the one we'll use. But there's also many other uh, tools that exist. Um, why we use BWMM? Because it has been shown to be one of the best mapper in terms of, uh, of, um, of accuracy. The one that would perform BWA is NovaLine, and we don't use it usually because NovaLine, you have some uh, licensing. It's not uh, totally free. So we don't want to, I don't want to push you to purchase a license because BWA is good enough to do, uh, to do the work. There's other good, so for example, Bota is really good as, a, as an aligner, especially when you do uh, RNA and uh, to do when you, when you want to extract um, exact matches. So there's other, and there's a lot of review about each aligner that, that pop up every one or two years. When we do aligner, when we do alignment, it's really important um, to align each lane separately uh, for many reasons. The first one is for speed, uh, because uh, sometimes when you do large world genome, you have like you could have uh, two or three lanes of alignment. It's less the case now that we have uh, the ISIC. Uh, the ISIC uh, X uh, because you can have really uh, a, a good amount of co a good uh, level of coverage with one lane. But if you still use uh, uh, ISIC uh, 2005, uh, we'll still have for like uh, cancer, you will need to have uh, several lanes uh, for each sample. So you need to um, align your lane separately. And when you do your alignment, what you in each uh, round of alignment, you add the RG tag. Uh, so the RG tag is a way to track where your read comes from because you will align to different lane. Each lane will have a specific each read. We have a specific RG tag that will be um, associated with the lane where it comes from. Then you merge everything, and if you see a specific pattern in your uh, final uh, set of aligned reads, you are able to split your um, your read by. A lane using the RG tags and to see if the, the pattern is spread in, in every uh, lane or if it's lane specific. If it's spread to every lane, you can say, okay, that's something that seems to be biologic. If it's in one lane, mm, probably you have a you have an issue in that lane. It's occurred to us. We have a we uh, we saw a, a set of um, one sample with a, an increased set of mutation in genes, and then we split by lane. We say, okay, we have one lane which is exome, where the other where uh, world genome, so that could 
that make a difference. So we need. It's important to set your read group. So for to track error to help differentiate the, the origin of reads in the final band, but also because many tools uh, will not work if you don't uh, set the, the read group. So when you align, you end up with a file uh, in the format SAM or BAM, as we saw this morning. Um, so SAM, sequence alignment, uh, sequence alignment map format. So the SAM file is a text file. The BAM file is a binary uh, version of this uh, file. So almost nobody use, uh, work with the SAM file because it's so huge. So nobody uh, work with the BAM file. And for each read, that is the type of um, data you have in the SAM file. So uh, there's many fields. Not, uh, not all of them are, um, are uh, mandatory. So I will not put, uh, I cut at the, on the mandatory field, but you, you could have extra slack field at the end of the, of the line for each sample. So the mandatory field are the read name, a flag. The flag is a numerical value uh, that you could use to describe um, uh, the mapping. So if you are uh, if your mapping quality is bad, if you are uh, not primary alignment, all these kind of features that you can uh, use to describe your alignment to tell if to, to, to give some um, kind of parameter of your alignment. Then you have your reference position, so the chromosome and the position. You have the quality score of your alignment, so it's a thread it's a thread score as we see for the best quality. So it's a probability. Uh, it's minus 10, the probability that your um, uh, read is not mapped correctly. Then you've got the cigar string. The cigar string is a representation of your, um, of your um, alignment. So here it tells tell you uh, 16M, which is the 16, uh, the, uh, uh, six, uh, seven, 76M, which is the 76 uh, bases are matched to the reference. So match, uh, map, sorry, not match, map to the reference. So map could be mismatch. You could be map and have a mismatch. So it could, you could have M, you could have I for uh, insertion, D, deletion. You could add S for soft clip, H for hard clip. So you have all this kind of, uh, of feature. Then you've got the position of the mate if you are uh, in a pair of reads. So the equal sign means that the uh, read is mapped on the same chromosome. If it's another chromosome, you will have the number of the of the of the chromosome and the position of that chromosome, and you end up with the uh, inside side of your data. Then you have your sequence, and then you have your read quality, your best quality. So now we have done the alignment. What is important to do is to refine the alignment because every alignment is not every aligner has its strengths and weakness. And, and any, there's no aligner which is perfect. So we need to take this alignment and to apply some set of um, filter and uh, rearrangement to make the alignment better and more suitable for uh, the variant calling. So the first thing we do, we, you already talked about that this morning, is to invert the alignment. Uh, why we do that? It's because uh, aligner tend to uh, favor of creating mismatch instead of uh, inserting in the app. So the idea is, Aligning a read is just a question of uh, uh, penalties and score of the, to position your reads. And for almost all aligners, uh, creating a gap is a, take a lot of penalty, while creating a mismatch takes not so much penalty. So when you arrive, when you have a stretch of letter like that, and you have an indel, it's sometimes quite easy when you are at the end of your reads to tolerate one, two, three, a set of number of mismatch instead of creating a gap. So usually when you see these patterns where you accumulate SNP in a really, uh, 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 several SNP in, in really short position, uh, it could be a sign of a, of a, indel, uh, uh, of a missing indel. So there's a, a tool in the, GTK, uh, in the GTK that is basically done that and we'll do it uh, uh, later on. And when you realign, when you create the indel, you see that most of your uh, um, variants read uh, disappear. Another type of uh, re refinement we do is to mark duplicates. So uh, what is the duplicate? It's when you have different reads that represent the same initial DNA fragments in your library. 
So you want to count only one read or one pair of read per, per real DNA fragment. So where does this, um, this, this uh, duplicate come from? So it could come from, from PCR. When you do your PCR, you can have crazy uh, amplification of your fragment, and then you, because you, you will end up with several uh, copies of your, uh, of your uh, fragment. So you, could, so you could also have what we call optical duplicates. So it's only valid for all uh, type of flow cells. So it's when your uh, flow cell is not well uh, load, uh, and when there's some, uh, clust some clusters that become giants because you don't put enough DNA, so there's massive amplification. The cluster become really large, and when the machine is looking at it, takes the, the, the picture, he uh, consider it as two different clusters. So it will, the, it will call a two different cluster like that, and it's what we call optical because it's just the optics that fail. In the new uh, set of uh, this type of uh, duplicates is not anymore in the new type of flow cell, but we have the other one. When you uh, uh, don't load enough your new type of uh, flow cell, you will have molecule. If the molecule is enough long, the molecule will try to jump into uh, empty, uh, empty, um, empty, empty uh, cluster uh, position. So because you, you have adapter here, so, so if there's no uh, molecules that go, go there during amplification, if the molecule is long enough, it will jump and try to amplify in the other uh, in the other well. And you've got uh, the sister one is when you have to close up to close, and it will create like kind of hybrid uh, of hybrid sequence, and then the hybrid usually it will it will be called it could be called one is one of the neighbors. So how we detect them? We can detect them before mapping using camera approach. It's what the one I told you. We, we estimate the top duplicates uh, at the fast Q level. But most of the people, more, more people use uh, uh, approach where we detect uh, uh, duplicates and we we do it after uh, mapping. So we are looking where the two reads map. So you can imagine that uh, if you have the same fragment, the data will map exactly at the same position. Another type of, um, of uh, quality uh, assessment uh, refinement we do on the, on the BAM is the base row calibration. Uh, why we do that? Because when the sequencer called the base, the base quality, it's time to inflate the value of the, of the base. Uh, and so we need to uh, re-estimate the real value uh, so the recalibration try to lower score based on specific patterns. So based on the cycle of the machine. So we, we, if we are in a good work, we should expect to see something flat uh, for every uh, cycle and for every type of read. But we know that there are some bias in everything. So what we do, we look at the specific genomic context and technical context and we uh, re-establish the true value of the uh, best, of the best quality. Um, so when you have done that, you have so refine the quality of your alignment, and then you will be ready to do variant code. Uh, so how, what is important to at each step of this um, process is to look at your matrix, because uh, it's where you will start if you have a specific an issue with your data. So really, I encourage you to uh, catch metrics at each uh, step of your process. So the metrics uh, so should be collected at each time. Uh, usually, each tool provides their own set of metrics, so it's not super complicated to, to get it. But you have other specific uh, tools you can use to, uh, to, uh, to um, ask for specific uh, additional metrics. So there's ton and ton of metrics. The one I really uh, look when I do uh, a, a project and a, an analysis, I look either what is my trimming value, what are my alignment rates, uh, what are the coverage I obtain, is that fit what we are supposed to have, what are the insert size, is it correspond to what the, the lab did. So all these kind of metrics are really important to uh, be sure that your experiment is correct before doing 
uh, the next step of the of variant calling. So the variant calling tomorrow, I will give you more detail about that in module four and five. Today, just to finish, just to give you a general uh, conclusion about that, not specifically on the alignment, but more specifically on working with this type of data. Um, so if you want to do um, to work on uh, NGS, uh, you need to be really aware of the technology and the method, because uh, every technology is different, implies different um, assumption, different type of sequence, different. So you really need to to have a good knowledge of technology and methods to that that could be applied to these technologies. Uh, you need to know what are the error and the technical artifacts you will face based on the technology you have you have choose. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to understand your results or to make sense between uh, um, something that make biology sense or not. Uh, you need to have both mathematical, mathematical and uh, informatic skills because uh, when we do analysis, we will use a HP, HPC uh, cluster. So we need its Unix environment. If you're working on uh, on Windows only, it's problematic. So you need to have good informatic skill and good mathematical to understand what you are doing because uh, many of the tools uh, do a lot of mat mathematics or now do more and more um, machine learning or this kind of uh, statistical approach. Uh, and now the major challenge for us as BIOF and physicians that work on NGS data is not so much the methodology, but there's still some methodology challenge, which is the capacity of the compute and the storage. Because uh, when you do, uh, for example, when, when we do large uh, project of hundreds of people in cancer, it could take uh, three to 500 terabytes of data to store and to process. So a major cost. So that's it. Mm -hmm.